Before going into the best spec so far in Shadowlands Season 1, we should first ask ourselves what makes a spec good in Arena. A lot of the times people will point to Arena representation to decide if a spec is good, but that doesn't paint a complete picture. We need to have a set of criteria that we can use to compare each spec in Arena before determining which specs work the best. There are two main things that affect how good a spec is during any point in the expansion, throughput and options. Throughput is simple. Does the class do a lot of damage or healing? If the answer is yes, it might be good in Arena. The second criteria, which is probably more important, is how many options a spec has. Options refer to the abilities a player has to adapt to changing arena environments. This can be in the form of defensive options and the different defensive cooldowns a player has. This can also be offensive options and how many offensive cooldowns a player has. Options also refer to how many CC abilities are available and how well they can shut down enemy CDs. Generally speaking, a spec is good if it has high throughput and a variety of offensive and defensive options for dealing with other classes and specs. If a class has a lot of tools that counter other popular specs, and if it can also deal a lot of damage or healing, it is probably one of the best specs in Arena. There is one spell in particular which is proving to be one of the strongest spells ever added to the game. Can you guess which ability it is? Make sure to stick around and learn about a new ability added in Shadowlands that has elevated a class to tier 1 status in multiple arena roles. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the best specs right now in Shadowlands Season 1. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look, and our core system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around including Chanimal, Maro, Zipai, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today, link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked in the description. Alright, starting off as the strongest melee DPS in early Season 1, it's gotta be Arms Warrior. Arms Warrior is one of the most consistent specs in Arena right now, having amazing damage and a wide set of defensive options available for any composition. Warriors offer a mortal strike effect with their primary damaging ability, which is especially strong right now given how high damage is across the board. Even if the meta changes and games wind up lasting significantly longer, Mortal Strike is still a powerful effect due to how punishing it can be in deep dampening. The PvP talent Storm of Destruction causes Bladestorm to apply Mortal Strike, allowing warriors to spread healing reduction to multiple targets. Arms is also incredibly durable in Arena, having access to defensive stance and ignore pain. One of the problems with Warrior's last expansion was the 3 minute CD on Die by the Sword. In Shadowlands, Die by the Sword is now a 2 minute cooldown, which allows it to line up better with many offensive cooldowns. Rallying Cry is also a 1 minute cooldown when used with a PvP talent, Master and Commander, giving the Warrior a temporary AoE heal for their entire team. The primary strength of a Warrior's defensive toolkit is how many options they have for their team. Intervene is back in Shadowlands and allows warriors to intercept melee attacks on their partner for 6 seconds. When paired with Disarm and Hamstring, warriors give their team multiple ways to deal with other melee DPS. And with the new PvP talent called Overwatch, warriors can spell reflect a spell cast on their party member when they are affected with Intervene. Against setup-based compositions like Rogue Mage, the warrior's defensive toolkit gives them the ability to shut down kill attempts with ease. War Banner can be used preemptively to deny Polymorph, Blind, Sap, and Psychic Scream. If the War Banner is not killed immediately, the kill attempt will almost certainly fail. As far as control is concerned, Warriors have one of the strongest CC abilities in the game with Stormbolt. This is an instant cast ranged CC which cannot be dodged or parried and is only avoidable with Shadow Meld or Physical Immunities. This ability can be used defensively to shut down the enemy kill attempts or offensively to train down an enemy target or CC an enemy healer. Intimidating Shout is also incredibly strong, being an undispellable AoE fear, and it's really good both offensively and defensively once again. Another addition to Warriors in Shadowlands is Shattering Throw. This is a high value ability right now given how popular Rhett and Holy Paladins are, and is even good against really any team with a damage absorption effect as it deals 500% increased damage to targets with shields. 
because Disc Priests are so popular right now, it can even become a setup option with the Demolition PvP talent. All in all, Warriors are definitely the strongest melee DPS in Arena right now. They have incredibly consistent damage throughput while having many defensive options for their team. The spec works well in a wide range of comps and will probably be one of the best melee for this entire season if they're not nerfed. Trailing behind Arms Warriors is Windwalker Monk. Monks have similar strengths to Warriors by having both consistent damage and good control options. They also have some of the best mobility of any melee class, which allows them to chase down enemy targets or quickly escape death. The biggest strength of Windwalker right now is just how consistent its damage is. Their standard damage rotation deals a lot of damage, with Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury dealing high baseline damage. When this high baseline is increased with offensive CDs, monks deal a ton of damage to enemy players. Monks also have really good control options for dealing with the current meta. Grapple Weapon is extremely valuable right now with how popular melee cleaves are on the ladder. It is also really good into Rogue Mage and can deny kill attempts during Shadow Dance. Leg Sweep is another high value spell right now into melee cleaves because it is on a low cooldown AoE stun that can instantly deny melee CDs. Ring of Peace continues to be very strong and is really powerful into Disc Priests because it can knock enemy players out of Power Word Barrier, effectively denying the entire cooldown. Finally, monks have some of the best mobility of any melee spec. One of the best ways to deal with enemy cooldowns is to simply avoid them. Transcendence allows monks to instantly avoid enemy damage when cooldowns are popped and is a great reset button for getting a favorable defensive position with their healer. Tiger's Lust is also high value right now with the popularity of Balanced Druids and can be used to remove the Entangling Root Solar Beam combination. It also continues to be strong into mage teams for helping healers avoid Frost Nova into Ring of Frost. Overall, monks offer their team really high consistent damage as well as multiple control options for shutting down many meta comps. Next up, in spite of recent nerfs, sub rogues are still one of the best melee DPS in Arena. Despite their nerfs, the strength of sub rogue is in its ability to elevate other classes. The spec fills a lot of gaps that other classes have, like stuns for mages in RMP and for hunters in thug cleave. Sub rogues are the bread and butter to so many setup based comps and have a strong offensive toolkit despite the nerfs. The most obvious strength of sub rogue is its front loaded burst damage. Echoing Reprimand and Symbols of Death, Shadow Blades, and Shadow Dance gives rogues massive single target damage and almost always forces one or more cooldowns when paired with damage from a mage or hunter. Right now, rogues are using one of two legendaries, Mark of the Master Assassin and Invigorating Shadow Dust. Mark of the Master Assassin can be used to maximize damage in openers and after vanishes and gives rogues big upfront damage. Invigorating Shadow Dust is another popular option, which allows their Vanish to reset important CDs and can throw off cooldown tracking by resetting cooldowns on Kick, Blind, and Kidney Shot. With how high damage is overall, sub rogues are really good at punishing mistakes. If an enemy team does not react quickly to rogue setups, they will almost always be forced to use cooldowns or die if offensive cooldowns are used. The front loaded burst is made even better when combined with the multiple control options that sub rogues bring. Cheap Shot and Kidney Shot are used during every burst setup and can be followed with Blind, Smoke Bomb, or Shadowy Duel for increased pressure. Overall, the nerfed sub rogue is still a huge threat in 3v3 and will continue to be powerful due to its ability to synergize with other specs well. If Frost Mage, Arcane Mage, Locks, or Hunters are buffed in the near future, sub rogues will passively remain as one of the best melee DPS in Shadowlands. Finally, rounding out the best melee DPS specs in the game, there are two hybrids, Rep Paladins and Enhancement Shamans. These hybrid specs practically share the same primary strengths, which are their powerful offensive CDs, team utility, and amazing healing. Rep Paladins are an excellent support spec due to their strong off-healing potential. Word of Glory healing is incredibly high right now, which is really valuable in the current meta where damage is also really high. This ability combined with the healing hands talent allows rep paladins to top their team off even if their healer is CC. Blessing of Freedom and Blessing of Protection are also really good in the current meta. Freedom can be used defensively to kite melee DPS and on healers to avoid root beam from balanced druids and ring of frost from mages. Blessing of Protection is really high value right now given the popularity of melee cleaves and is really good into rogue mage for removing kidney shot or blind to deny kill attempts. Aside from their utility, Rets offer massive burst damage during offensive CDs. Avenging Wrath damage is really high, especially paired with Divine Toll. This Covenant ability paired with the Ringing Clarity Conduit allows Rep Paladins to get multiple Judgment casts off in a short period of time. 
potentially allowing four judgment casts over two global cooldowns. And Enhancement Shamans offer similar strengths to Rep Paladins. Their burst damage is incredibly high during cooldowns, and they offer tons of team utility with their totems and off healing. The Doomwind's Legendary combined with Ascendance and Bloodlust give Shamans a super scary set of offensive cooldowns. These cooldowns can also be paired with the Venthyr ability called Chain Harvest, which deals AoE damage and healing. The spell can be made instant cast with Maelstrom procs and can instantly heal the entire team. Enhancement Shaman off healing is also strong right now, with Maelstrom procs giving them instant cast heals similar to Word of Glory. Shamans also remain incredibly disruptive against caster DPS, and spells like Grounding Totem and Tremor Totem are really good into any team with Shadow Priests, which are the best caster DPS right now. To conclude the section on melee DPS, Arms Warriors are definitely the best DPS due to their amazing consistency and flexibility in the current meta, but playing with any of these specs will give you a high chance at success in Arena. Alright, moving on to the caster DPS, there are four specs right now that stand out from the rest. Shadow Priests, Fire Mages, Balanced Druids, and Elemental Shamans. This definitely seems to be the season of hybrid specs, with hybrid classes currently representing many meta comps. Representing the best caster DPS in the current meta are Shadow Priests. If any comparison is to be made, it is that Shadow Priests are the arms warriors of caster specs. They offer good consistent damage with multiple control options and one of the most unique abilities in the game, which we'll get to later. Overall, they're just incredibly well-rounded. They have two talents, Unfurling Darkness and Damnation, which allow them to quickly spread dots onto multiple targets in Arena. This allows them to have seamless swaps and setups, and allows them to pair their damage over time with their single target damaging abilities like Shadow Crash. Power Infusion and Void Eruption are really powerful offensive cooldowns, and pair effectively with the instant cast CC options that Priests have. If dots are rolling on multiple targets, and if Power Fusion and Void Eruption are used, Shadow can deal a ton of pressure. Silence, Psychic Horror, and Mind Bomb are all really powerful right now due to how high damage is. Oftentimes, a 4 second instant cast CC is enough to either force a cooldown or score a kill if damage is high enough. These options pair well with one of the most unique and powerful abilities in this expansion, Mind Games. During the intro, we teased that there was a new spell added in Shadowlands that has helped elevate a class to dominance in multiple roles. Mind Games is that spell. This ability needs its own category to explain. It is one of the most dynamic abilities ever in Arena. It can be used against healers to force a dispel or risk killing their entire team. It can be used against Rep Paladins and Enhancement Shamans to deny Word of Glory and Healing Surge. It can be used against Balanced Druids to deny the self-healing of Renewal and Frenzied Regeneration, and it can even be used as a defensive CD. If cast on an enemy player popping offensive damage, it can completely deny a setup by converting that damage into healing. This can be strong into setup-based comps like RMP and Thug Cleave, if not immediately dispelled. Even if a dispel is available, Shadow Priests often pair mind games with Silence to ensure maximum value. Shadow Priest's defensive options are also really strong right now, with Greater Fade being one of the only abilities that allows player to avoid Spear of Bastion Covenant abilities from Arms Warriors. Next up, representing the only pure DPS class for the best casters in Shadowlands Season 1 is Fire Mage. Fire Mages are the most well-rounded pure DPS caster right now, with high consistent damage, a powerful offensive CD, and multiple spell schools to CC with. Having three spell schools is incredibly valuable in the current meta with the prevalence of melee DPS. Because their damage spell school is different than their control spell schools, Fire Mages can seamlessly manage interrupts by always having a school to cast. If kicked on fire, they can polymorph. If kicked on polymorph, they can cast damage. If kicked on fire or arcane, they can cast Ring of Frost. Fire Mages become incredibly scary with combustion, especially when paired with Rune of Power. One of the biggest changes to Fire Mages in Shadowlands is a change to the crit modifier. Critical Strikes are back to dealing 200% damage. This was a massive buff to Fire Mages, who rely entirely on crits for their damage rotation. This increased crit multiplier makes Combustion unbelievably scary. Many Fire Mages are playing with the Rune of Power talent, which will instantly proc when Combustion is used. This gives them a massive spike in damage and doesn't rely on any hard casting, making it a form of on-demand pressure even when used against teams with multiple interrupts. Mages also gain back Alter Time, which can be used to manage the high burst damage of many comps, especially combined with Cauterize. Mages are still mages, and fire is still the best. Their control and burst damage makes them one of the best specs so far in Shadowlands. Another hybrid representing the best ranged DPS so far in Season 1 is Balanced Druid. 
their cooldown damage must be respected. When combined with their control options and team support, Balance is one of the best specs so far. Balance Druid's damage is both high with AoE dot damage and single target burst. They have multiple spell schools, allowing them to deal with many interrupts in 3v3. Their primary damage comes during Incarnation or Celestial Alignment when 90 Astral Power is stored to unleash three instant cast Star Surges. These surges increase in damage with both the Kyrian Covenant ability and the legendary Time Worn Dreambinder. When a Druid pops Incarn with a full bar of Astral Power, a lot of damage is coming. A cheesier option, but scary nonetheless, is the Night Fae Convoke the Spirits, which casts four Star Surges on average during its four second duration. Druids also offer control outside of their offensive CDs. Cyclone continues to be one of the best spells in the game and is now even better with the High Winds PvP talent. With damage being so high, a Cyclone plus a damage reduction is incredibly high in value. Rounding out the final spot for top range DPS is Elemental Shamans. Once again, another hybrid DPS class is proving to be dominant in the current PvP meta. Elemental Shamans offer instant cast burst damage combined with a well-rounded utility toolkit to support their team. The primary damage setup of Elemental Shamans is relatively easy to execute and doesn't require any hard casting, making it suitable for dealing with the multitude of interrupts currently in Arena. Shamans deal most of their burst damage during Stormkeeper, combined with Echoing Shock. This combination of spells allows Ellie Shamans to deal massive damage with their lightning bolts while requiring no hard casting. Overall, most of their damage comes from instant cast spells, allowing them to utilize their utility options for their team in between their damage rotation. Grounding Totem, Lightning Lasso, Earth Elemental Stun, and Tremor Totem are all incredibly high value spells right now, allowing Shamans to shut down kill attempts from Rogue Mage by countering CC with Totems and Disrupt setups with stuns and interrupts. This dynamic toolkit allows Elemental Shamans to work with a wide range of comps and keeps them well equipped for dealing with other meta dominant classes. Alright, moving on to the final category in the best specs of early Shadowlands Season 1, it's time to talk about healers. Right now, there are three healers that stand out in the meta, Holy Paladins, Disc Priests, and Restoration Shamans. Each of these healers brings a unique strength to Arena, with Holy Paladins offering big burst healing with efficient cooldowns. Disc Priests are offering incredible damage output and pressure, and Resto Shamans are one of the most mana efficient in the game. It's hard to say exactly which healer is best due to how unique their strengths are, but each of these healers pair well with other meta specs. To start, we've got Holy Paladins who were quite understated early on in the expansion. They offer the strongest burst healing and have incredibly high throughput during Avenging Wrath. Their healing output during Wings is so high that it is unlikely anyone can die on their team, assuming the Paladin is not CC. Avenging Wrath can even randomly proc with the Awakening Talent, which offers an RNG way to save their team in scary situations. The Kyrian ability, Divine Toll, also offers a lot of burst healing. It is possible to max out on Holy Power with a single Divine Toll cast, granting access to an instant Word of Glory. Paladins also continue to have some of the best and most consistent defensive cooldowns in the game. Blessing of Protection is high value because of the popularity of melee, and Blessing of Sacrifice is great at denying CC options from comps like Rogue Mage. If Ultimate Sacrifice is selected, Holy Paladins can completely deny damage onto their partners. Ultimate Sacrifice can be paired with Divine Shield or PvP Trinkets to completely shut down kill attempts from Rogue Mage. Saved by the Light is also back and gives Beacon targets an Absorb Shield while at low health, giving an increased chance at making a recovery. If targeted, Holy Paladins have some of the best defensive cooldowns with damage being so high. Divine Protection can be used during stuns and can deny kill attempts. Against Shadow Priests and Affliction Warlocks, Paladins offer Cleanse of the Weak and Divine Vision, which grants reduced dot damage. Blessing of Freedom is also good into melee cleaves and is great against balanced druids for denying root beam. Next up, Discipline Priests continue to be the best offensive healer in Shadowlands. They have a great toolkit for supporting their team with kills. Power Infusion, Dark Archangel, Thought Steal, and Mind Games open up kill options for their team. Power Infusion is great when used on mages, but it's also good when used on melee DPS like a Rep Paladin. Thought Steal is a new addition in Shadowlands. While it isn't selected for every matchup, it is quite powerful in Terresto Druids and Mages, stealing their Rejuvenation or Polymorph for its duration. Priests also have the option to have one of the best AoE heals in the game with the Ultimate Radiance talent. Power Word Radiance with Ultimate Radiance and the Shining Radiance Conduit allows Disc Priests to have powerful AoE healing. It should be noted that this heal is really mana intensive. 
Some priests are now transitioning back to atonement-based healing to conserve mana. Purge of the Wicked, Schism, and Mind Blast allow priests to deal damage while AoE healing their team, which is just always going to be powerful. Even though it was covered in the Shadow Priest section, Disc Priests also have access to mind games through the Venthyr Covenant. Once again, it is one of the most dynamic abilities ever in Arena. It can be used against healers to force a dispel or risk killing their entire team. It can be used against Rhett Paladins and Enhancement Shamans to deny Word of Glory and Healing Surge, and it can be used against Balanced Druids to deny self-healing. It can also even be used as a defensive cooldown. If used on an enemy player popping offensive damage, it can completely deny a setup by converting that damage into healing. Door of Shadows is a great tool for Disc Priests in setup-based compositions like Rogue Mage as well. It allows the Priest to quickly reposition for an AoE fear during kill attempts. Overall, the offensive toolkit of Disc Priests in this high damage meta makes them one of the best healers in Shadowlands. Finally, Resto Shamans represent the efficient healer of this strong healer trinity. Shamans are incredibly mana efficient and have multiple instant cast heals. Their damage is surprisingly high and they have multiple tools to disrupt enemy casters. Shamans have two charges of Riptide with Echo of the Elements, Earth Shield as an instant heal, and the new Necrolord Primordial Wave. These three spells give them multiple instant cast healing options. These spells are also incredibly mana efficient, allowing them to out mana Disc Priests in longer games. Their instant cast healing allows them to keep their team topped without worrying about getting interrupted by the other meta dominant classes. Resto Shamans continue to have great control options against enemy casters and are especially good into Shadow Priests with Tremor Totem and Grounding Totem to avoid CC. Surprisingly, Resto Shamans also deal a lot of damage with Lava Burst, which is a guaranteed crit with Flame Shock and can be instant cast with procs. The increase to the crit multiplier makes their Lava Burst damage actually pretty scary. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.